Can you hear me? Can you see me? Uh, yes. Most people absolutely hate Microsoft Teams, so I get it right out of the gate. If if you're like, yo, what the f Why aren't you just normal like Zoom? But anyway, sir, uh, thank you so much for spending some time with us. How was your shoot? It was great. Are you are you able to tell us who you were who you shot today, or is that all secretive stuff? Uh, no, yeah, I actually already kind of teased it. It's um, a band called Christian Death. Christian Death. Is it a Christian band that does deathcore, or is it just a combo and nothing to do with that? <laughs> Christian Death is one of the first death rock bands ever from uh, the early 80s. Uh, wow. So they're one of the like legendary goth bands from back in the day, and uh, they're still going, and they coined the term death rock. Like death rock, that whole genre – they pretty much started it with like 45 Grave and a bunch of other bands in the uh, way back in the day, early 80s. Very cool. Um, for those that may not know who you are, sir, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are and plug or promote anything you'd like. Sure. Um, I'm Jeremy Saffer. I'm a photographer from Western Massachusetts, but I travel all over doing photo shoots and such. Um, been a photographer for almost 20 years, uh, touring for a bunch of years, live photography, music photography, celebrity photography, magazines, album covers, directing music videos. Um, yeah, and I'm also the editor of Outburn Magazine. 20 years doing photography is absolutely mind-blowing. Looking back... Yeah, I'm, I'm wicked old. <laughs> looking back on such a prestigious career, who was the first major photo shoot you had not i don't mean photo shoot i mean like al you're gifted like a back in the day here here's a a press pass you can you can walk in the pit area and photo shoot somebody but who's who's someone that that you that you took photos of that you were just like holy shit, mama i made it i made it well my first like five photo shoots were like lacuna coil overkill slayer a life once lost in a perfect murder. So I kind of started off with uh, not small local bands, which was really, really. So you were just thrown in right into the, right into the the main scene right away. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because I've been in the music scene for so long as a musician before turning into a photographer, and I knew a lot of people. So as soon as I started doing that, it just kind of. Just kind of went, yeah. Plug plug your old school bands that you used to jam in back in the day. Uh, old school bands that I used to work with, or no? That, that you you to? said that you used to play as a musician. So like name, I want to hear your the name oh. of your bands back in the day. Oh, uh, they were terrible, and you can't find anything in the internet, <laughs> thankfully. But uh, Rot Rotten Forgotten and Winter Throne were the two main bands I was in back in the day. Rotten Forgotten was one of those early death metal bands with a f female and male vocalist at the same time. And uh, Winter Throne was a black metal band that was kind of a two-person project. If somebody was to hire you for your services, what is the best route that they could go to uh, to contact you? Uh, email, message me, anything. Any way to, to get in contact with me, I'll usually see it because uh, I kind of handle all my own stuff. So messaging me on Instagram, Facebook, email, any of those things. Messaging my manager, Des, that works as well. Is there is there a, like a smaller time band that you've been feeling lately that you that you think need this is a, a local band show. Is there is there a smaller time band that you've been feeling that that you think needs a little bit love uh, that should be possibly considered to be signed by a bigger label, but maybe and it can be any genre. I'm trying to think. I, I work with a, some local bands. I don't work with a ton of them. Uh, the one I work with the most is Living Dead Girl, who I think are absolutely incredible. I think they're going to be like the next big band. They kind of sound like if 
motionless and in this moment kind of mixed with Avril Lavigne, so they're kind of pop metal. Yeah, like this is this is one of their awesome videos. If you want to play it, go I, for it. I, I would like to check it out just because I, I love hearing different, you know, aspects of what you guys are, what you're vibing and what, what you're jamming. And I've never heard of uh, Liv So you're saying this is the unsigned band that labels need to know about? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And when, and when you work with them, they, they, they hit all the check marks for personality. They're, they got the cool, they got the cool check mark. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Molly's one of the best people ever. Without, I mean, the band is basically her. Without without saying blank, blank, blank band, what is what is the worst photo shoot you ever went to? And, and again, don't name drop any names, but <laughs> but this was a nightmare photo shoot for you. Uh, just this weekend, I had a nightmare photo shoot, but um, <laughs> some of the worst ones are the ones that don't actually happen. Where like you get set up and then something happens where the shoot gets canceled or someone's sick or whatever someone doesn't want to do it um but it rarely ever happens it's like once every five or six years there'll be a band that you know walks out of uh, one person's hung over had a bad day so they walk out of the photo shoot to give you a hard time um but i try not to judge anyone on stuff like that it's kind of like all right we all have bad days i have bad days you have bad days so I kind of give them a three strike rule. If they're a dick once, all right, I'm going to give them another chance. If they're a dick three times, they're a dick and I'm done. <laughs> no, that's that's but a very fair some rule. Of the bands that have like, yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, there's so many bands that have these terrible reputations for being difficult to work with and they're so easy to work with. They're awesome to work with. And then you have these bands that are much smaller, like like the biggest bands are the easiest ones to work with. They're professional. They know how to do what they need to do. They don't give you a hard time. They just get it done. But bands that are kind of mid-level or even a little above that, younger bands are kind of more difficult to deal with because they haven't been doing it as long. They want they want a shot like exactly this way, and you're like, bro, I'm the guy that's going to give you the angles, all this. Like, let me do my work. I get it. Uh, no, it's never anything like that. It's like they walk into the photo shoot and they're like, are we done yet? That kind of attitude. You know, they never we never really clash in terms of artistic vision or anything like that. Luckily, thankfully, when when transitioning to be from a musician to a photographer full time, I imagine some form of schoolwork or classes to upgrade your craft were involved. Can you go about like your your knowledge of the lens? Well, I actually didn't do any photography until after high school, so I didn't take any photo classes. The first tours I did, I was shooting on fully auto because I had no idea what the hell I was doing at all. Um, and I was going to Berkeley School of Music. That's where I went to college. And wow. I did two semesters there and absolutely hated it. I was going for music production and engineering, and it was just this miserable experience. And that was my life trajectory since I was 10 years old. Like, Ollie from All That Remains lived on the same street I did, so he's my guitar teacher growing up since I was a kid. I was training to go to Berkeley. That was like the dream. And then when it kind of died and you have that death of passion, it's kind of like, oh, what do I do? But I was shooting shows that whole time. But I kind of did it for fun. I never thought of it as like, this is my career. It's like, OK, cool. I get to go see, you know, Rob Zombie and I get to be this close to him and take pictures. That's that's sick. You know, I get to see Santana and make my dad proud. Cool. Let me let me rewind my question. So, so so you so you're basically you now teach photography classes, but I guess to to reword that question, what what were you shooting possibly while at Berkeley where someone was like, "Bro, you should do this full time. I would pay Uber's amount of money for these photos. Can I hire you to be my full-time photographer?" Like when is the changing point this band this experience or this tour or something along the lines of that, 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 you know what? I'm going to step aside and do this full time. Like this is serious. When is that moment? After my second semester at Berkeley, I was so miserable and I would skip homework to shoot shows. The person who first got me into photography is a dude named Scott Lee, who's managed tons of bands he manages like kuba khan right now he does sound rank so if you know vip stuff he does all that um but back in the day he ran mass concerts the palladium the webster the new england metal and hardcore fest rock and shock and i always 
his photographer since I was 15. So I went to him when I hit that kind of fork in the road. I'm like, dude, Berkeley is miserable. I think I'm going to drop out. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know what I want to do. Well, what do you like to do? Take pictures. He's like, do that. And it never really dawned on me as something that like I could do other than to get into shows and see bands and have fun. And it was just like, oh, okay. And he, he really helped me a lot, push me on that path. And from there, I already knew so many bands from working at the Palladium, working at the Webster, doing all the, the photos for those bands and stuff and for mass concerts. So it was an, a very easy transition. And basically, I jumped on a tour, jumped off a tour, went to the Hallmark Institute of Photography, which was a 10-month intensive, like, super... I didn't even know Hallmark kind of had that. Just... That's amazing. Different company, not Hallmark okay, like okay. the greeting card. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so I did that when on OzFest uh, 2004, 5, 2005, jumped off, went to school, went back out on OzFest. So... I was able to do that. I was like, I won't go to school unless I can do OzFest. You know, I'm not going to miss it. So, yeah. When considering Berkeley School of Music regarding your, your music career and as far as production, did you consider mm -hmm. Full Sail and a couple other schools as well? Or is there a reason you particularly chose Berkeley as your music production school? I'm not sure Full Sail was really a thing at the time I went to Berkeley, which was 2003. Okay. Uh, I don't know when fail, Full Sail started, but I live in Massachusetts. Berkeley is in Boston. I wouldn't be far from home. And Berkeley was always the dream for me anyway. Um, but in terms of mp and &E, I was just miserable with it, man. Like, as a player, I can play metal. I can play death metal, black metal, thrash metal, whatever. But as soon as they're like, play blues, play jazz, play this, play that, I'm just like, dude, this shit is miserable. I hate blues. <laughs> I hate jazz. Like, I, I can with more soul and i'm like i have a seven string bc rich beast with spikes all over it. it eats souls i don't know what you want me to do you know and it was just super frustrating so with photography i can shoot anything and love it it doesn't matter what i'm shooting i'm gonna like it i can shoot anything like i of course i don't like shooting still lifes as as much as i like shooting people but i'll do it and i won't be miserable doing it i won't feel that cringe of oh i hate this like i did with playing blues with not enough soul do you do you get the do you miss stepping on stage and do you get to do it every now and then at all or is it just full-time photography i i don't jam in front of an audience anymore um i am much more of i, I am much more in the music scene now as a photographer than as a musician and my opportunities as a photographer are much more than i ever had a musician as a musician I get to step on stage with Korn, Megadeth, Slayer. I get to share the stage with them taking photos. I'm not on the stage as a musician. And as a musician, I would have never shared the stage with Megadeth or like any of those bands I looked up to when I was a kid, like Korn and stuff like that. And I get to work with the bands who were on my walls when I was a kid. You know, those are like the people I work cool. with, talk to friends with, you know, that's cool. It, it's like insane when you get that phone call and you're on the phone talking to someone who is like, you're a hero when you're growing up. And it's just a, you know, it dawns on you every now and again, because you get those phone calls all the time. And you talk to the people you work with or your friends or whatever. It's just like, holy shit, I'm talking to, you know, this person from this band. And I've seen hundreds of interviews with them because I was their super fan when I was a kid. And now they're like, you know, we're on the same level, which is cool because they respect my art as much as I respect their art, which is a really cool thing to have. I That's think like, it's I think it's trippy that we're doing this interview and there's like a demon exorcist woman in the background the whole time. So I'm going to play something just to switch it up for for background reasons. Um, is there another yeah, sure. is there another artist that uh, is a local artist that you'd prefer us to play as well as I'm going to ask a chat question, if that's OK. Does being a musician yeah. help you? with your photography as far as the angles and shots that you take during a band's live performance? Not the angles and shots, not at all, but in terms of timing, absolutely. I know my one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I know my counts. I know when my bands are going to hit. I know songwriting. So I know, okay, here is the verse. Here's the bridge. Here's the chorus. The chorus is when the lights are going to blast out big white and that's when to get all your shots. Um, being a musician you also know 
when I'm shooting someone with a guitar, okay, move the headstock up here, move the pegs towards me, bring the the pickups here, bring, you know, you know, loosen the string. Uh, I, I know all the bits and parts of every type of, you know, because I was a guitarist, bassist, keyboardist, drummer, hand percussion, you know, hey, I did everything. I'm new so here. I know every bit Hi. of every instrument and stuff like that. And that's very helpful when photographing instruments. So yeah, absolutely. Being being a musician absolutely helps, for sure. Uh, we reached the point where I want to ask if you're down to review some bands with us, as well as can we showcase some of your work. So after this, I'm gonna I'm gonna require you to drop maybe a, a website or something we can showcase, uh, and maybe we can hopefully send some people your way to not only like and and follow you, but possibly hire you so you make some money because you did this interview. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Tell me what you think about this band called Akota. So this is a local band show. So most of the bands we play on the show are, mm -hmm. are bands that are up and coming. And I do want to ask, uh, so you get a second to think about it. What is some advice that you would give to an up and coming photographer? I know you, you earlier said, I used to shoot an automatic all the time. Maybe the transition of why you switch from automatic to manual shots, certain lenses, anything that could be like, hey, I'm, I'm a person that just hey i shoot my boyfriend's band my my girlfriend's band when, when they're live how can i take that to the next level maybe a piece of advice in that category but first let me know what you think about a coda for a question jeremy what do you think of the song and what do you normally jam in your personal time that's awesome yeah that sounds really good the production's amazing what, what do you jam in your yeah, personal time that, that was awesome Oh, uh, a little bit of everything. So I'll go from listening to some newer stuff like uh, Zeal and Ardor or Soin or Opeth or whatever, usually metal stuff. Um, and then I'll listen to like old bands that I used to listen to. Like, I don't know, when I'm put on the spot, my mind goes blank. I'm like, what do I listen to? Let me open my iTunes and look at what about What about non-metal stuff? Um, like something we wouldn't expect you to listen to. Uh, I listen to a lot of non-metal, actually. Uh, I listen to a lot of Portishead. Uh, Hell yeah! Sneaker Pimps is awesome. S both, uh, both. Yeah, super I listen fire. to pretty much everything. I'm Sneaker kind of all, Pimps all and Portishead were, would stay on repeat for me. I mean, we're talking like 15, 20 years ago, but for sure, stay on repeat back in those days. Uh, man, I haven't jammed. I haven't heard Sneaker Pimps in a while, but uh, Portishead for sure. I feel like they were ahead of their time too. With like kind of like the female mm -hmm. version of like a Deftones psychedelic kind of just cool rock, but uh, is there is there a particular genre of artist that you don't really like to photo shoot? Maybe a hip hop, hip hop, or or DJs, or I don't know if that's like a, a question you can answer because you're like, no, if I say if I say this, then I won't you know get business for this genre. So I don't mean it like that, but I I guess I'll say what is the most difficult genre to shoot maybe it could be a country artist because of all the backing singers and you have to get you know the four or five females doing the the big hook uh does that make sense as far as a question yeah um to me it's not really about the genre of the band um the smaller the band the less production they have the less lighting they have the more difficult it is to shoot um, so it's definitely not based on like country bands. I don't, I haven't shot a country show. I don't get hired for that. So, uh, country production. Is would, would you do it? Would like, you do it? If, if a bigger country artist was like, yo, I need you, bro. Yeah. I mean, I'll shoot anything. I don't care what I shoot. I'll, I love pop music. I would shoot pop bands all day. Uh, yeah, I'd shoot whatever. But, uh, in terms of what's difficult to shoot, it's all about production. It's all about having lighting. And if they don't, it's going to be tough. If they're like all fog, it's going to be tough to shoot, you know, stuff like that. I mean, just looking at your, your catalog of, of photos, they're absolutely mind boggling perfection. Are you, are you Nikon Thank Canon you. or can you, can you go on the list of what your whole setup is? If I was just a solo artist that wanted a shot, just like Corey right here. Yeah, just talking like a, uh, a two foot away. What is your what is your lens setup and and camera? Um, for something like that, that would be a twenty four to ninety Leica lens on a Leica SL two. 
with uh, two lights on the side, probably just two umbrellas on the side for that shot, I, I believe. Like, I can break down any shot on here and tell you what was used. I think the most uh, – Instagram probably has the most recent photography that I've done for sure. Okay, I'll load it up in just a second. Give that me one's a... the most updated. Give me a second to get it real quick. Yeah, but no uh, let's throw in a random one, something that uh, I don't even know what this is going to sound like. Let's, we'll go Gabe Fritz and – this is caucus and this could be any any artist any genre anywhere in the entire world we don't know what we're gonna hear ahead of time costist costist the youtube didn't come up with anything here's blackwater blackwater sniper when is the time when you went to do a shoot and you were just like the most nervous you ever been you're literally walking in sweating but you're wiping your forehead so they don't see any sweat. Hey boys, what's up? Let's do this shoot, blah, blah, blah. But you're the most nervous ever. I get into this thing that uh, people who know me call photo mode, where I just get this like tunnel vision of just thinking about technical things. And I'll pace around until the photo shoot happens. I'll be excited about it, but I'm never really nervous. I just kind of make sure the lighting's 100%, do my test shots, and make sure when the band comes in, it's going to be 100% when they walk in. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I don't really get nervous. And I kind of get into this mode where I'm just concentrating on the lighting and posing. And it's funny because some um, some bigger bands I, I work with kind of laugh about it because I'm very directional um, when I shoot. I'm like, okay, you chin up, turn your, turn your chin this way. You take a step this way. You a step towards me. Perfect. Chin up a little bit. Turn your face this way a little bit. And I'll start shooting. And you know, most bands are used to that because I do that a lot. But uh, some of the bigger bands are like, huh, usually people are scared to talk to us or tell us what to do. It's awesome that you do because you know what it's going to look like and we don't. So they get really like pumped about that kind of stuff. But never really nervous. Afterwards, I'm kind of like, holy shit, that just happened. But very rarely am I, am I nervous. It kind of afterwards, I'm like, that was awesome. I can't believe that happened. I got to shoot, you know, this band that I care about. And it's usually much smaller bands rather than bigger bands are the ones I, I care about more because I'm into more underground stuff. But yeah. Is there one is there one particular shoot where maybe like your family or friends were like, dude, Metallica, Slipknot? Like what what is the one that most impressed your family and friends? Probably Alice Cooper, honestly. And I've worked with them really? a few times. Um I would say he's probably one of the most well-known people I've done photo sessions with. Uh, you know, him and Johnny Depp, but the the Depp photos aren't even out. But um, yeah, Alice Cooper, I would say, is probably one of the most, more than Slipknot, just as much as Metallica, that he's probably one of the most well-known into the 60s to now because he has fans from the 60s. Metallica does not. They started in the 80s. Um and Metallica kind of lost a lot of fans as they went, and Alice Cooper just was consistent. So, and I think he has a lot more fans now than he did back in, you know, the '60s and '70s. So, I would say probably Alice Cooper. But um, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Bucket list. These in order: one, two, three. The three artists that are like the holy grail. I just can't believe it. I'm shooting for A, B, and C. Someone you haven't worked so with yet. Number one on my, yeah, 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 of course. Uh, so number one is is Ozzy or Black Sabbath. I have photographed them live and I've toured with them, but I've never done a photo session with Ozzy. He is number one. Uh, two is Elvira as Elvira. You know, Cassandra Peterson Hell yeah. as Elvira and full Elvira. Yep. Um, those are the top two. Three would be Metallica as a full band. I've shot individual members as solo kind of things i haven't done a full photo shoot with them uh that would definitely be probably number three it's interesting you say elvira are you are you a hardcore horror fan at heart i am yeah absolutely okay so we're gonna we're gonna appear we're gonna we're gonna pivot for a second uh first of all first what is your first favorite horror franchise of all time and then what is your favorite gory film a diehard horror fan what is your favorite gory film well, my favorite franchise is definitely the uh, Hellraiser series. And what's really cool is if you go to Doug Bradley's Facebook page or any of his pages, 
his profile photo is a photo I did of him. Which that's is what I'm cool. talking it's about. Like, Let's oh. go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of cool. It's like one of those <laughs> one of those situations where it's like, oh, I get to work with Freddy Krueger, Pinhead, Jason, Leatherface, the people who I have like tattooed on my arm are people I work with now. So that it's really, awesome. really cool. Um, favorite gory movie specifically based on gore. Um, the new evil dead was really gory and really good. The, uh, the remake, it was really, really good for classic stuff. I'd say like cannibal Holocaust is a really messed up gory one. That one's, um, that one's rough. Yeah. But I don't really go for gore more so than storyline. Like Trick or Treat's one of my favorite horror movies. For real. Why uh, is there not a sequel yeah. to Trick or Treat? Trick or Treat is one of the best. Uh, he announced it. Uh, Michael Daughtry di did announce it, but he recently just did uh, the Godzilla movie, which was actually really good. Uh, Godzilla King of Monsters, which was awesome. And he keeps on saying, you know, he'll do Trick or Treat 2. Then they did the comic series, which is okay. It's not... It's not great, but hopefully it happens one day because Trick or Treat 1 is incredible. It's a classic. For those of you guys who don't know where it's, it's Trick or Treat, not Trick or Treat. Um, specifically, it's like a cult classic horror film that uh, has a couple of really cool actors in it. I don't think it did any numbers by any means, but it, it did numbers like post theater, blah, blah, blah. Um, Jeremy, <laughs> last, last couple of questions I have for you, bro, and I appreciate you taking some time out with us. Is there any chance that yep. maybe you could step on stage someday and rekindle your your musicianship? Nope. Not whatsoever. Nope. There's nope. I put down my guitar for a camera and I still feel like all right, if I'm any sort of I I'm a musician playing a camera, the camera's my instrument, you know? I like that. Good answer. So I I feel like that part of my life is gone and music theory has exited my brain and it's all lighting theory you know do, do you ever do you ever miss the fact that you may not have obtained that music production knowledge or looking back on it i don't really need to have gotten that because of all the side stuff i've learned from from band tours and photo shoots like i kind of have a knowledge of somewhat production and you're a music, musician yourself so maybe you didn't need all of that like pro tools knowledge and whatnot Oh, no, I know Pro Tools. I learned it. I, I learned on a Digi002. I knew Pro Tools inside and out, just as I know Photoshop now. Uh, but if you open Pro Tools in front of me right now, I'd have no idea what's going on. Um, Same. But, you know, I shifted from music to photography. So having as vast of a knowledge as I do in photo applications versus music applications, you know, it just one replaced the other. And I have no regrets. I didn't miss out on anything. I'm I'm not like, oh, I missed out doing this because I toured the world multiple times. Uh, I toured with a bunch of bands. You know, I toured with some of the biggest bands in the world. And yeah, I didn't, I didn't that, miss anything. That actually leads me to the, what was going to be my final question. Again, not naming the band. But what is the absolute craziest tour story you can give us? This band just went crazy they threw stuff on the walls they broke the tvs anything you can give us maybe not even that but just the wildest tour story uh again don't mention the band but what is the wildest behind the scenes story you can give us i'm trying to think because there's not much like other than trashy like we're at a summer metal festival kind of shit went down uh, uh sorry for oh you're good you're good on. you're good fuck shit cunt <laughs> oh, all right, cool. it's all good um I, there's just some random stories that aren't like oh wow but um we i was on tour with i don't mind naming bands because it doesn't matter i was on tour with i wrestled a bear once and we were playing at the bigger venue of a two venue area and there was a death metal show inside um the death metal show was immolation goat whore and and somewhere someone else and i'm friends with all those guys shout too. out go whore Hell yeah. But death metal bands do not like playing smaller stages while I wrestled a bear once plays bigger stages. So they bought a bunch of dildos and started throwing them on stage at I wrestled a bear once as what? they were playing. And at one point, you know, I was shooting Mikey on the drums and a dildo just landed right on his kit. And then he started you know, like hitting it and it was bouncing around and we were just dying laughing. Then he just grabbed the dildo and started playing with it like as a drumstick. It was great. 
That is hilarious. Was this was this Courtney? Uh, uh, was Courtney full time at this point, or was this the original? Uh, I wrestled a bear. Krista. With... Okay, Krista. Yeah. Um, yeah, that tour we... was awesome. It was uh, Iwabo, Chelsea Grin, uh, Vanna, I Set to Kill, and the Chariot. What a lineup! My final question for you, sir, and it's been an absolute honor. We normally don't have non. I don't want to say non-musician because you are a musician, but I mean, like currently in the scene, we normally don't do this. But my my last question is, what is the ultimate goal of yourself? Uh, I know that's a weird question to ask, but how would you like to take what you do to the next level? Maybe there's an idea that you have of something that you're brewing. And I, maybe you can't tell us what this is, but... As someone that's already clearly making it in the music scene and taking the shots of which are are album covers, magazine shots, what is next? What is something that you personally are like, you know what, I could do this better. I could do this this way. What are you striving for right now? So I'm always trying to better myself and always trying to learn new things, learn new lighting, learn new tricks. But um like long winded the the ultimate goal is to leave a legacy to leave like you know be remembered as a photographer who did photography and is looked at as okay this person captured this era kind of thing um in terms of short term goals i have my next book in the works which is going to be all music photography and you know the stories behind the shoots like what went wrong when someone walked out of a set when you know someone so wait 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 so you're, you're going to drop like a coffee table book of all your best shots, but with the backstories? Yep. It's a New York Times yeah, bestseller. Yeah. I will, I'm buying it personally. I need to know the backstories, bro. Can you give us any timetable of when? Is it going to be out in 2022? Let's just say that. Uh, I don't believe so. That was the plan, but then I got COVID when I was supposed to be working on it, so I didn't get to kind of do what I needed to do, and it's going to be a little involved, so like I'm doing a chapter on in this moment, for example, but Maria is doing part of it as well. So I'll do a day to remember because I shot their first album cover. So I'll have a day to remember in there, but I'll also have like Jeremy, Neil and Josh and, and Tom or whatever kind of put their commentary on how that day went. And I'll show the photos of like, oh, there was five girls involved with the photo shoot that were never seen. Like, you know, the one where they're like in their school outfits and all is it, that. Is this the, -na 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 -na, I need to break through. Is it, is it that album? Yeah, yeah the first album. I yeah. don't remember the title. It escapes me, but I definitely so jammed it. I'm, I'm actually from uh, South Florida. So I, I've seen them a lot, a bunch when they would play all over uh, Florida before they blew up when I was a yay high tyke. <laughs> but yeah, that's oh, so yeah. cool that you get, you get the band's commentary in the book. So I imagine, yeah, as exactly. you said, like it, it takes a lot of time to get, clearance like this quote is good whatnot blah, blah blah but dude so maybe early 2023 we'll be on the lookout for that and i i mean is it gonna be i, I imagine it's probably be like a a bigger hardcover because you you want to showcase your big shots and explain the story of it yeah it'll probably be similar in size to my last book daughters of darkness which is absolutely massive where can we go and purchase that book right now Oh, anywhere. Uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, the publisher, Rare Bird is the best place to get it. Um, Forewarning, it Rare is not safe for work. It is adult content. <laughs> so there's FYI. boobies. There's booties and boobies. Just so you guys know, there are. Yeah, don't don't pop it up on <laughs> Twitch. You're gonna get a the ban hammer real quick. <laughs> Hell yeah, Jeremy. I appreciate you spending some time with us, man. This is an absolute pleasure. We normally don't have people as yourself that have been so. Uh, just so gifted in the music scene and encapsulate mm -hmm. moments in, in the way that you do. Like there's something about going to a show, but then seeing that one shot that you personally take and it just brings everyone back to that moment. And you do it so perfectly, dude. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Jeremy Safford, ladies and gentlemen, you probably can't afford it, but if you can and you want the best photos of your <laughs> life, Holler at my boy, Jeremy Saffer. Ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. Thank you, dude. Thank you very much. Sorry for being late. It's all it. good. It's all good. Thank you, sir. Be safe on the road, brother. Thanks, man. Take care. Thank you so much.